Alrighty then, um, welcome back to the Homotha project. And uh, today we're going to be working on the. Uh, ooh, ooh. I not need to move my whole desk cam, that's in a very smart move. Um, to, uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to work on the tail. Uh, uh, no, not on the tail, I mean on the chest part and then fill that part up. So that's what we're going to do today. So today we're going to be focusing upon getting the feather. There and we're gonna fix this part up right here. So um, I hope you're all gonna be enjoying this for today. And um, oh hi Mark, nice to see you around. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a lovely it's gonna be a lovely thing to do. So I can already see like this part over here needs to be fixed, but therefore I need to figure out like what it is. So. I think it has to do with the tilt part, probably. So we're gonna be working on that part um, very fast. But yeah, we're gonna be focusing on this. So we're gonna be focusing on this part. So uh, to get a little idea what we're gonna be doing, is that we're gonna be making a lot of a lot of feathers around this. So yeah. Um, So yeah, exactly. So we need to keep this. We need to keep this part until here, like this. Just so need to move the size back to five, and then go back to full screen. There you go. So yeah, we're gonna be working on this. So we're gonna be working from here to there, and fix everything up. And then we're gonna try to figure out where the layers are that we had to fix beforehand. Of course this is going to be requiring a lot of things to do. So yeah, we're going to be changing up the image so that we can now uh, get everything to one place. So yeah. Uh, let's get started on this. So we don't need this we don't need this body because this is very confusing so that we can now figure out like where do we need to put things like over here we need to put a feather there and we're gonna just be casually blending these feathers these tiny feathers into the main structure then of course we need to also make sure that we don't screw this part over here up that's the uh, part where you know the fur is of the moth hawk so yeah, we need to make sure that we have that part as well covered. But yeah, we can also just use uh, a mask to you know, not destructively work with it. Uh, let's see if everything works. Let's see if the voice works at least. I need to know. Work with it. Eh, it works, but I need to put it a little bit more close to me. So test 4217. It works, but I need to put it a little bit more close. Yeah, that works fine. All right. Um, and look at that. That works. Yes. All right. So now let's get started on this. So the idea here is that we are just going to be filling up the gap, the wide gap that is laying here around, with feathers. It's not anything special, really, but you know, it is. It needs to be done because you know. It's a bird, and a bird is a lot of feathers in one place. Well, it has a lot of feathers at least. Ooh, cooking space junk, nice. Also hi. Yeah, cooking. Uh, today I had not. Today I could not cook because uh, my mother was actually cooking. So yeah, I could have cooked. I cook. I could have cooked, but no. But yeah, it is a lovely day today. Sun shines, everything, uh, it's constantly raining, so you know, it's a perfect day to game. And so I did that as well. You know, I tried to figure out some stuff, and I think I finally found the right thing I needed to do, so yeah, gonna be fixing that as well. Oh, hi, Blue. 
nice to see you as well Sean so we're going to be now we're going to be having the structure towards the uh, uh, fellas already because you know we don't want to we're just going to be doing this casually anyway but yeah everything is running fine everything is running easily so I'm happy There you go. So yeah, uh, the idea here is that I'm trying to get this, um, these feathers done, and uh, we're gonna be filling up all the white stuff here because we need to because otherwise it won't look good. Anyway, uh, so where was I? Oh yeah, I was here, right? I'm gonna be putting this picture book open. I'm gonna be just putting it open a little bit. Um, I want which part do I want to be open for today? Ooh, that's a beautiful place. We open it. There you go. So how does this look like? So yeah, I was right about this. So most um. I just opened a book about dinosaurs. You probably don't. Well, you know, I always have books about dinosaurs laying around. But yeah, there is a dinosaur book here, and I took a look at it. All right, I just took a look at it, and um, it showed one of the pictures where one of the little tiny theropods has uh, not wings, nor feathers. But pre feathers, yeah, pre feathers. There you go. And the funny thing is, actually, the whole body exists of it, except the uh, except the claws and the uh, except the claws and the arms. Uh, yeah, except the claws and the feet. So yeah. So uh, let's see if I can find the word for this. So. Uh, links for uh, the conficulus. Uh, it's from the conficulus sor soreness. Conficulus soreness. And there you go. Very spooky name right there. Conficulus soreness. So it's one of the earlier birds type of um, dinosaurs. Let's put it that way. So yeah, um, you are probably wondering like why would I just talk about this? Well, because of the way of the art style it works. I can show you that because that is one of the important parts that I'm using right now. So I'll do that. The con 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 figulus fig uh, con con um, Confucius, alright, so it's Cius, Confucius Soreness, Confucius Sore, Soreness, there you go, the Confucius Soreness, and I'm gonna just go here, oh man, that's so much. That's a lot of different kind of approach of a Confucius when I see one. Holy damn, the art is different. Holy hell, it is so much different. Well, at least I can give you a prime example how it looks like, so... You're probably wondering what the hell am I just looking at. Well, that's the chicken, boys. That's the chicken. And now I can just... Uh, and then I can go for a right... Uh, Lewis Rylus illustrator, so I'm gonna go for that. Lewis Ry uh, Rice uh, 
So Lewis Rice. Let's see if we can find it. So there you go. It's artwork. And I'm looking for the creature itself. Let's hope I can find it. Uh, the rest of my. It, this is the rest of my. Anyway. Show it anyway. Look. I need him. So yeah. Um. Why can I have a prime example about his artwork? I can show you it right here. So yes. There you go. So his artwork is quite uh you know, this is his artwork, as you can see. And you can also see that a lot of the per a lot of the uh, dinosaurs actually have complement uh have uh Pre feathers in it. So, as the oviraptor uh, uh, here, it looks like it's like a giant turkey almost. It has this whole palette of uh, little feathers in it. So, yeah, that is one of the um, that's one of the ways of you know doing it. So, yeah, I'm gonna be just looking at it. Let's see if I can find a better one. Probably not. No, I can't. Well, anyway, this guy, uh, this guy had the you know birds with feathers looking like that, and that's the idea. So the legs are like ostriches. So the legs are most likely bold and not very nicely done, and then the midsection is full of feathers. Same goes on the downside of the spinal. So that's why. We have implemented. Oh, I closed the damn thing. I closed my bloody damn stream looking to look at the comments. God damn it. Ah, uh, don't you worry, I'll, I'll find back. So, anyway. Anyway, just hold on. Just one sec. Boom. Back again. There you go. Push. I'm back. Alright. So, yeah. Um. That's the whole idea of it. So, because of the uh, the claws and the legs are exposed, and the rest of the body is not. So, the rest of the body is still, you know, in feathers. So, to give you a give you an idea of how uh, give you an idea of how this uh, how this is actually looking, I'm going for the pre version of a bird instead of you know going for the full bird version because and you would have more like not be able to see like what is different so yeah that's the idea so that's also why I choose this idea so like open claws with and feathers on the bottom side and then you know on the mid I should technically not go for this but you know it would be fine, it looks nice. But yeah, uh, I hope that's good enough of an explanation why, why I did choose that kind of approach. Why I'm gonna be filling all this uh, all this artwork with, you know, um, feathers. So yeah, the, the feathers are representing the pre-feathers that you know, normal, normal looking bird has. But because this is actually a bird, it doesn't have the pre feathers, so it's not hairy, it has feathers instead. Uh, the feathers are most likely used for isolation, because you know, that's how feathers work. Feathers absorb heat, and well, well not heat, they will contain, they keep the heat within. So yeah, and I should not have done that. Should not have done that like that. That and it minus yes. So yeah. Now we're gonna be going to the big part here. So we need to figure out how we're gonna do this. So I need to now go back to the body. We're gonna be looking at the part where we need to go to, so So yeah, this is need to be like over here till here, right over here. So yeah, we have 
this part, which is going to be representing over here, that is going to be the dance layer. I'm going to be putting it like until there. So we can only work on this part of the sector. Alright, good. I am not doing it right. Well, luckily we have Control C for this. I'm gonna be going for this. I'm gonna be going and doing it here. So I'm gonna be going here. Boom! There you go. And now we can work on it. Easy, easy. So yeah. Um. Anyway, I now explain to you guys what what I'm gonna be aiming for and why I'm aiming for it. I hope you guys saw what I did. I hope I pulled it uh, pulled it to the right direction. I think I did so. So I should be fine on that part. I'm not gonna be repeating myself here. It would be horrible. But yeah, um so that's why we're gonna be filling up this whole, you know, uh, midsection with feathers instead of you know anything else because we want to represent the feathers that are normally representing in the coat of a bird you know these nice overlapping feathers that just you know are used to keep the heat keep the heat in and be isolate, uh, be isolate, uh, used for isolation or, uh, you know, for smoothness in the body. Yeah, for uh, aerial smoothness. So the wind resistance. That's why you see always with birds that you know birds can live in cold climates because of their feather coat. So if their feather coat is dense, like this one has, you know, it can live in like pines. Or it could li uh, live in normal forests, so you know you could you could see them in the forest, but you could also see them in pine forests, because you know normally a forest with pines is actually quite colder, has a colder qu climate than you know a normal a normal dense forest, which you know has a uh, dense forest, no pines climate. That would be. A natural 20 degrees, I think, probably. But pine pine forests can go colder, which is the interesting thing about it. Also, pine forests are resistant to dry uh, to dry seasons. So if there is a if there is a dry uh, if there is a drought, so that means that there is no water. Yeah. If there is no water, the pine cones are actually still be able to be hatched once the rain will fall. Because pine cones have their own fat reserve inside of them and are isolated from, you know, uh, moisture lost. So they are quite survivable. This is why you first will see pine trees bloom and then leaf trees bloom. If there is a new area, to be discovered for these type of forests. So yeah, first there will be pine trees and then there will be leaf trees because leaf trees require more nitrogen and more energy uh, from the ground itself. So water, food, you know, all that stuff that is necessary to grow. And pines don't. That's is why pines are actually quite superior towards them. But they're also not superior towards them. Uh, pine trees are highly, highly not, uh, highly vulnerable to uh, acid rain because acid rain, you get it, acid rain. So because of the uh, acid inside of the rain, uh, the roots of the pine cones are more uh, fragile. If I'm correct, so that the the hairs on the roots are gonna be uh, destroyed, which then leads to uh, a dead tree because it can no longer get the food out of the source where it came from, so out of the ground because you know it has been damaged for too much. So yeah, 
and leaf trees are actually more resilient towards that part. But because of because acid rain does not uh, acid rain does exist, it doesn't mean that you know it exists everywhere. But you know nowadays it's more common. This is why leaf trees are always planted near. This is why leaf trees are always planted near the uh, highways at our, in our country because they are more resistant and will not die from acid rain that quickly. They will die from acid rain eventually, but they will not die like very quickly as the trees that are before them. So they can take some. They they are more resilient towards it. They are not immune. They are resilient. Um. That's also the idea, like, why would you plant a tree near the hall hallway? Well, that's because you need the oxygen to be absorbed. But but then you're not supposed to... Then you are like, why would you then put it on a leaf tree? That's because leaf tree is actually far more resilient and because of the high CO2, uh, CO2 near the hi uh, highways, uh, it creates a less good environment for... Uh, a needle tree, so yeah, palm, needle, whatever. The, the thing that has the needles at least. Like the Christmas tree. Christmas tree. So the Christmas tree you won't see them too much. I hope he's cooking something good. I'm hungry as well. Should share this picture with us, you know? The good old fashioned picture of like show us we are we want food. But yeah, um I'm trying to do my very best, you know, to just say like uh this is like really, really just drawing fattest today, but it is good because you know eventually it will fill up and then, then it will look look nice. So that's the idea. D it's all about, you know, a waiting game. It's like a waiting game of, you know, I'm done with drawing for today and then eventually I will continue. But today I'm not done because I need to finish off what I have been starting. I want to finish my schedule of, you know, filling the whole thing with feathers. That's the idea. So once I'm done with the feather part, I can then continue, then I can go towards the back part where all the hair is. So the idea of, um, the idea that I'm the idea of focusing I'm dividing my tasks is quite important important to me because otherwise I will not get my tasks done so yeah hmm let's see what what do we want to learn more oh I know because of the problems that uh, you know birds have, uh, the pro the problem with birds is that they have wings, right? They can fly away, and that's very easy and very good. Well, not all the birds have wings, actually. Penguins penguins do have wings, but they are not developed to fly. The flyless the fly flyless birds have actually adapted to, you know, use their feathers in other ways like heat heat absorption. Uh, heat reflection or heat absorption, heat reflection or uh, let's see which one is more what's what's the other one I don't remember the other one but yeah so feathers are actually quite functional in many ways like you could for, you could have feathers that are actually good at isolation you have feathers that are good at heat reflection uh, I think the ostrich feathers are actually heat reflective. This is why ostriches actually have black and white coating on their uh, feathers. It's also very fun to see that, you know, I didn't even notice. Uh, the ostrich chick, the chick of the ostrich actually loses its feathers once it finally reaches maturity. So, until it is mature, it won't have the adult feathers, but once it has the adult feathers, it also has the claws, so it could actually defend itself. 
so that's quite cool. Also, the camouflage of the chickens uh, from the ostrich are actually designed to hide, which is quite nice. Camouflage is apparently a thing in animal culture, and I didn't know. Well, I do know, but you know, it's a little bit boring to just put something into a picture and then say yeah it's camouflage you can't see it that's like not really how it happens but you know if the creature is comfortable it would actually show up in different places instead of the normal places where you know camouflage is necessary this also creates dangerous environments because uh, like in India if you uh, I think it was the leopard the leopard, right? Yeah, the leopard. Um, so in India, because the leopards are getting more, uh, you know, they are getting more like, oh wait, uh, we can just sit here and do nothing, and uh, food is just here in abandoned me, and now I found a new place. So the ermine environment is actually a place where they just go like, oh look at that, I found a new snack, and then you know they take out a dog or kill a human in their sleep and then drag it along towards their place. It's quite uh, quite uh, frightful to think like you know you're reading a book and then suddenly a tiger appears in your room and says hello there. So yeah. It's a thing that happens you know the uh, the amount of you know conflicts between ma man and animals is actually quite high. And even the dangerous animals, where you are like, oh, well, that thing should not harm anyone. And it's like, oh, really? That kills people? Yeah, it kills people. How? And then you realize, like, oh, wait, I have totally a wrong vision on that animal. Yes, you have. Like, um, the hippo, the hippo, the mominus? Eh, the hippo. There you go. Way easier to say. The hippo is actually the most deadliest creature in Africa. It kills more people than lions do. And crocodiles. So yeah, don't ever try to do that. Don't ever try to go into a place where a hippo li li uh, goes to sleep. So if you are trying to camp in Africa, don't do it near a path where hippos walk. Because they get really cranky. Yeah, I watch videos of the f uh, foot of the lizard. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, hippos are scary. They are like big giant pigs with uh, lots of uh, lots of anger. They are ha they are heavily tempered, and I mean like heavily tempered. They are no joke. They are no joke at all. They can they, with their teeth they can actually crack. Uh, they can slice a crocodile into half, and that is scary. Also, um, what I have noticed because of you know the way of how nature works these days, you know, nature is pretty damn scary most of the times. Um, I don't know if this is true, but I think it is. Yeah, it probably is. Um, because of the drier seasons in Africa and um, uh, places around the world, let's put it that way. But most likely now in Africa, let's focus that on. Let's focus on that part. Um, the hierarchy of alpha predators is changing. It's not now changing, but it is changing. I think that's true. But I don't know if it is, but I thought it was true because I saw it on the Natural Geographic World, so probably it's true, but. Yeah, the higher degree of the alpha animals getting really scary. So, because uh, lions are actually quite, you know, impressive, but uh, they are quite impressive, but they are not. Uh, how do you say that one? Ah! They're endangered. Yeah, there you go. They're endangered, and uh, they are endangered as well, I think. Uh, not endangered, but 
they they are they are they are a species that get hunted but because of the habitat lost of the lion it sometimes cannot recover from its habitat lost because another alpha predator is actually just stealing their stuff and is actually far more specialized in you know keeping the competition out of their territory which is quite impressive the uh, idea of you know keeping somebody out of your uh, keeping somebody out of your territory or the territory is no longer viable uh, viable because of the climate changing it can lead to some strange uh, things like for instance lions no more longer going to that area and instead of the highest predatorial creatures actually a, a, is an abundancy which means that you're dealing with hyenas instead and hyenas are no joke they are excellent hunters you think they are scavengers but they are superior hunters they even use pack tactics like wolves they buy they can um, break a knee they can break a they can break a knee of zebra and then you know the zebra can no longer run well, it has been chased by the hyenas and then gets eaten alive. That's how uh, that's how efficient these things are. And because of the no competition of the lions, it means that the hyenas actually land the superior, uh, the superior alpha predator, which can lead then to turf wars between hyena clans itself. Because hyenas are cannibals, they solve their issue by themselves. Though, so you should not be worried about overpopulation. You should be more worried about like uh, you should be more uh, worried about like wow, those lions are no more. Before they were like they were all they were like they were always like competitive with each other. But you know hyenas are far more adaptable. I think that's true. According to my knowledge, it means that I could I could be wrong here, but it's still an interesting thing to take a look at one day. Like, is it really true that lions are actually better as uh, are better than than hyenas? And some will say yes, some will say no. And, you know that that always goes to go on a debate. I'm not gonna be debating here with you guys. I'm just gonna be talking and cleaning up my head like what I'm doing right now, and that's just talking while drawing these feathers. Which you know is the whole reason why I'm doing this. But yeah, one thing one thing is for certain: the most deadliest predator in in Africa is still the hippo, because of its uh, ferocious, uh, not appetite but uh, anger management. Even calves can actually die because of a of a of a uh, alpha uh, a bull. Being really aggressive because you know bulls are always in a bad temper, a bad mood. The pool boss is in a bad mood, and then you know the little boy, the little boy is getting murdered because of the pool boss and being in a bad mood. So yeah, acceptance between ch uh, be uh, an acceptance of a child in somebody else's pool that is not from him, you know that uh, that that uh, that gets uh, sout really quickly. So yeah, um, working on those sweet feathers, you know, all the time, every day, every life. But yeah, it it is quite interesting to see um, how wildlife goes around and goes around like really hard. The main the main thing I'm now dealing with is like how I'm gonna be finishing this off. But I think I got I think I got this. I think I got this. Yeah, I got this. I got this. It just takes some time, you know, to make these feathers. And why does it take so much time? It's because of the amount of, you know, stuff I need to take care of. All these feathers are always in, in a, how do you say, in a state where you know you need to create some motion between them or texture, and that texture sometimes can take some time. Because textures are really hard to do.
So yeah. Hippos are cute like snakes. Yeah, they, they are cute to look at. Until you see their teeth that have been sharpened forever. Because, you know, they always sharpen their teeth. Because whenever they open their mouth, or not, then they are sharpened. But yeah, they, they are sometimes cute when they uh, when they smile. But ne never ever they are going to be nice to you. They are cute, but they are not going to be nice. Oh, by the way, if you ever want to outrun uh, a hippo, don't try it. That thing can actually run for 40 miles per hour. So yeah, a uh, big giant fat horse, seahorse is actually really, really good on land. Technically, hippos cannot, uh, cannot swim. They sink to the bottom. So, yeah. That that is also a thing that you need to keep in mind of. Hippos are not swimmers; they sink because of their enormous weight, which is quite cool. Also, they have terrible skin for sunlight. This is why they actually uh, always crowd themselves into merge themselves always into water because they have terrible. Uh, they are not good with the sun. This also means because they are highly territorial it means that they always will be attacking you if you are coming close towards their stuff, their pool, their legend. <laughs> Be Miss Pythons. Yeah, Pythons. I still like the Arconda, the biggest longest snake in the world. It's a really good snack. Really cute cute one. Very nice looking one. Really. So yeah. Ooh, uh, let's save this before I'm gonna be doing anything else. So yeah. Um Let's take a look at how far we got already. That looks good. That looks really good. And then eventually when we have the whole whole thing in there, you know, the uh, fur coat on the, po on the top side of it, I think it will look nice. Yeah, I think it will look nice. Hawk noses, nice. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, if we're going to talk about that, you know, I think nothing can beat doggos. I think doggos and uh, and uh, kitties are actually quite nice to look at as well. I like my dog because I can actually hug him. I can hug him tightly. Like, oh, you, you, you. So, yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, um, we're almost, you know, at the part where, you know, we're almost there, luckily. We're almost this close to finishing off the last remaining part of, you know, the feather part. Do -do 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 -do. So yeah.
I hope you're all going to be satisfied and uh, so far already with the quality of the of the stream. I hope it has not been lagging or anything else like that because I always try to improve myself on you know getting a good stream quality. It's one of the things that I'm actually striving towards to like I want to do a good stream but I don't want to cause any problems with it. And some games I cannot stream that often and good. I realized that I forgot that. Nothing tops the curvious dwarf Kaiman. Oh man, Kaiman. The dwarf Kaiman even. Oh man, very exotic. Oh yeah? I think something uh, something actually got better than that. Y you know who is also cute? Hey, piranhas. They're really cute until they bite. And they really hurt. D -d 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 piranhas. Yeah, those things with giant giant teeth, yeah. The ones with the under on un the underlip. Those things. Piranhas. What do you mean piranhas are scary? Yeah, they they are scary. Especially when they are threatened with no food. They will get really hungry. Which happens because the invasive species, the Indian lungfish, or the imp impera, if I'm correct, an impera is actually one of the invasive species that cause um, piranhas actually to be more hostile towards anything else because this thing actually hunts them and also destroys their food chain. So yeah, piranhas is all like, oh wait, we can actually eat more things than that. Yeah, let, let's just start immediately attacking something that ends the water and then devour it, flash and hole. So yeah. Piranhas are really scary. Really scary. Also, Imperas are very scary as well. Walking fish. Come on, man. Walking fish. If you ever seen something like that, ugh. Those things are the bomb. Just a fish that walks on, wa on land and water that can breathe air. That's like, allow me to just introduce myself towards you. I don't care. I don't care if you move my water. I will just walk towards it. I don't really think of uh, I don't really think of fish as cute. Some of them are pretty uh, pretty though. <laughs> well, they're not that huggable, so I would say you can give them minus points for that. But yeah, they do have doodly eyes. They have adorable eyes. I will tell you that. Some of them, at least. Same goes for cuttlefish. Also very beautiful to look at. I remember them to see them in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Snails. Snails! Sailing at a snail's uh, smell, snail step. Oh, pace. Let's go. We're just comparing now animals towards each other. Like, who could who could be the most adorable animal to uh, on the world? And then you know you have this whole live show of the cutest animal there is, and then everybody brings their exotic animals with them. And you have this whole you know TV show about you know who's gonna be who's gonna be the next cutest exotic animal in the world? Is it gonna be A, B, or C? And then you know you have this general applause of people, and this whole video station determined towards you know the next new uh, an uh, pretty animal of 2020. Yeah, with all these fancy people that just uh, caught uh, an awesome, cute little thing, 
like you have that rich person, that famous person, and then you have that all, also that regular old-fashioned dude guy, who always always brings the same animal towards the show. Yeah, I think I think that it would be doable. <laughs> Wasps are cute. <laughs> yes, yes. What wasps were cute, yeah. Wasps were cute. They're not very nice towards you, at least. That's oh no, wait, those are hornets. Never mind. Wasps are also evil, but hornets are evil, more evil. <laughs> there is not. Uh, there, uh, they are not round like bees. They are dimensional. <laughs> That damage their cuteness. <laughs> yeah. I think termites are also very cute. Termites. Yeah. The big guys, the strong bodybuilders. Termites. Oh no, we're under attack by ants. Let's use artillery. Let's use chemical war warfare against these ants. Why? Uh, are they not immune? No, they're not. Oh, wow. And then they just build another wall to fight off the ants and then seal off the other exits, like, retreat! Uh, ant versus termite wars. Holy hell, those are really cool to look at, sometimes. They are quite developed in dealing with those things. Also, it's quite fun to see that ants are actually superior towards termites in some in some aspects. But you know, uh, ants are more deceptive towards uh, plagues like um, fungus. Yeah, fungus spread is evil. That really hurts the ants. Mods are cute. Mods win. <laughs> Mods are very cute. That's true. Yeah. And so is this. So is this. Mods are cute. They always look at you with their boobly eye. And their face like, did I do something wrong? And then they will say, give me my lamp. Give me my lamp. I will not ask again. Give me my lamp. So yeah. Beware the lamp. People. Beware the lamp. Mods and lamp, lamps go like way back. Before the Great Lamp War, yeah. Let's see, so we're almost done with that part. I love that. I love to hear when I'm always saying, and we're almost done. And then you look at it like, what? We're almost done, and I'm saying yes. Who? Yeah. There you go. Anyway, um, it is now 50 minutes in, so I'll call it a day for today. Pressing 5.
So yeah. Look at that. Boom, baby. Looking quite nice already. All right. Um, I hope you all enjoyed for today. And thanks for watching. And until the next time. Have a nice day. Bye.